Hey guys, what's up? Paladin here. How you guys doing? Uh, so we are finally going to go ahead and do the WrestleMania 30 review. Um, I would have rather done this after WrestleMania 30, but we kind of had technical issues when we were watching it. So uh, we kind of didn't do it after immediately after WrestleMania 30. And we just decided to do it after Raw today. So that is why it took a while to come out. And unfortunately, this is probably not going to get uploaded until the day after Raw, which would be the 8th. Uh, cause I have to render this, but anyways, um, luckily it's not going to take four hours like that Call of Duty video that took four hours cause that was pure 1080p HD and I didn't realize it was going to take that long. But anyways, once again, my buddy Zach is here with me. How you doing, Zach? Not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good other than a certain thing that happened at WrestleMania 30. But anyways, we will get to that in a moment. <laughs> um... Firstly, uh, we did not watch the kickoff, and I kind of regret it because people said that the kickoff was really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I kind of regret not watching it, but uh, luckily uh, I might have a little bit of access to the WWE Network now. So uh, hopefully I will be able to actually rewatch that. So sorry, we can't really give a review of it right now. I don't know if we actually will later. It's just, you know. Well, it's, a... it's actually not our fault because this actually should have been on the card in the first place. So Yeah, it should have been on the card in the first place. Uh, it was removed from the card. Those of you that don't know, uh, you know, this was originally supposed to be on the card, but then they decided to put it to the kickoff. Not exactly sure why, but whatever. So the kickoff is the Usos uh, versus Los Matadores, the Real Americans, and Axel. I'm just going to keep calling them Ryback and Curtis Axel, at least in my opinion, because Axel is a stupid fucking name. But anyways, <laughs> um, it was a fatal four-way uh, elimination match for the Tag Team Championships. Uh, championship, which it is technically two belts, so championships is also a correct term. But anyways, uh, the time for this match was 16 minutes and two seconds. Uh, Zach, what was your, uh, what was your, at least your opinion of, I guess, this Going to the kickoff, the pre-show. It being on the pre-show? Yeah. It shouldn't have been on the pre-show. It should have been on the main event. They could have put it on there. Um, I don't know. It just should have been on there. Yeah, I, I from what Especially I've... since it was 16 minutes. Yeah, from what I've heard, it was a really good match. Um, Like, they said that... Uh, it's, I'm surprised that uh, Los Matadores was eliminated first, by the way, and not Rybaxel, but anyways, uh, Ryback and Curtis Torito. Axel. Huh? Torito. Yeah, El Torito. Sounds like, to, to, what the hell is that chip name? Tostitos? Tostitos. Tostitos. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, apparently everybody put on a really nice performance, though, and, uh, you know, the Uso is one. I, like we said, we can't really give it a proper star review or anything, because, you know, we didn't watch it, but... And, uh, the, um, the breakup of the Real Americans came out of this? Oh, yeah, uh, we do know that the the real Americans broke up, and that uh, I guess Cesaro and Swagger argued for a bit, and then they uh, and then I from what I've heard and seen, uh, Cesaro, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? He started swinging Jack Swagger, uh, you know, after they broke up. Anyways, uh, the first match of the night is Daniel Bryan uh, defeated Triple H, uh, a singles match for the third spot. In the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat Match. This match went on for, uh... Oh, wow, they actually changed the time. Um, this match, when I initially checked it, said 2550-something. Somebody must have corrected the time on Wikipedia, and now it says 2647, which is even longer. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe, uh... Maybe it got changed. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and somebody changed. Yeah, some of the match times have changed. Apparently, uh, maybe they were incorrect in the first place. I don't know. But anyways, uh, this match was simply amazing. Yeah, it really this was. Great, really, um, hot way to kick off WrestleMania. It was a really great way to kick off WrestleMania. It I love was Triple H's entrance. Yeah, Triple H, <laughs> Mr. Shao Kahn from fucking Mortal Kombat. Triple H, man, there are so many memes everywhere about that. But uh. I cannot believe that he came out like that. That was a really sick entrance. It reminded me a lot of uh, 22, right? Was it 22 or 23? 22. 22, yeah, when he came he out. He wasn't at 23. Huh? He wasn't at 23. Okay. When he fought, uh, it was John Cena, right? When he had that entrance? Yeah. It reminded me of that King one. Of Kings. The King of Kings intro. When he fr I think, was that the first time he used the song? Yeah, too? yeah. I believe so. First time he used the King of Kings song, too. It was ironic because it was backwards this time. Uh, he came out with that. 
And then the game song, you know, played instead of the uh, King of Kings song, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, this match was just, it was, it's really hard to explain. It, it really was just great. You just gotta go out and see it. You really have to see it. Uh, it was really back and forth. Um, to be completely honest, it wasn't just a complete beating like another match later in this card, but anyways, um, it it wasn't a complete beating, like Triple H didn't completely own Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan wasn't completely owning Triple H. Uh, the end of the match was your classic back and forth signature and finisher fest, which always, you know, makes really, makes for really good, uh, drama at the end of the match and gets the uh, crowd really pumped up. I was surely pumped up when that shit was going on. That was awesome. Did, uh... Did he use... He used a sledgehammer, right? Is that... No, he didn't. Was that... It was later. Oh, that was later. Oops. Yeah. Zach, damn it, I, Zach. I couldn't remember if it was... Da- again. I wanted to mention it. If... Damn it, Zach, you spoiled it. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, um... I, I would give this match... Uh, I'd say a 4 out of 5. A good, solid 4 out of 5. Maybe a 4.5 out of 5. I'd give it a 4. Maybe 4 and 1 fourth. Yeah. Um, but, uh... Yeah, Very what, great, though. Yeah, what, what was, uh... Like, what's your opinion of the match, besides your review? Your, your uh, star review? Pretty much what you said, you know, it was great, and... The right guy won, um... Good back and forth, just... One of the great openers will be up there. We talked about, you know, like, uh, like Owen and Brett and, um, can't think of any more, but it was really great. Yeah. Not like Seamus and Daniel Bryan two years ago. Oh, was... <laughs> Daniel Bryan came out the biggest star, bigger star in that, though, which is funny. Yeah, which is kind of funny. Um, well, Seamus, when he first started his career, was, was really in there, but, you know, he's kind of died down, but, uh. Triple H's buddy. <laughs> Triple H's buddy. Uh, next up we have, uh, The Shield, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns defeated Kane, New Age Outlaws, Road Dogg, and Billy Gunn in a six-man tag team match. I, uh, there wasn't really technically a winner for this match, because no one really got pinned, if I remember correctly. Let's see on Wikipedia. Uh, I'm about, to, I'm about to say that right now. The match time is apparently three minutes and six seconds, which, uh... Which always pisses me off because the pay-per-view always has about a good 45 minutes left in it, but they end it 45 minutes, or not 45 minutes, I'm sorry, 15, they end it at 45. Uh, they, uh, it always has about a good 15 minutes left in it, which pisses me off because they don't use the complete amount of time, yet on Raw they always go over, uh, which really bothers me all the time. You're paying, you know, if you, if you don't have the network, you're paying like $60 for, a, even before the, you know, the network, you're paying like $60, you, you could at least go over with the pay-per-view and add more matches or just promos in general. It, it always kind of aggravated me. I guess they have a schedule or something. I don't understand that. Um, but, uh, yeah, this match was, uh, to be comp- <laughs> what actually, um, what actually kind of happened is that when, when everybody was doing their entrances and coming out, I went to go take a piss because, you know, the under, the, the, uh, the Daniel Bryan Triple H match was, you know, 26 minutes long. So I was drinking a bunch of water and I had my energy drinks and stuff like that. So, you know, I went ahead and I ran to the bathroom because I had to take a whiz. And uh, I just, I came back and the match was already over and I was like, what the fuck just happened? What are you, Booker T? I, I had to go to the bathroom. No, but, uh, yeah, I was getting pizza, so... Yeah, I, I came back and I see, uh... uh stuff on, I, I saw, like... Outside. Yeah, I, I saw, like, the very last, like, 30 seconds of it. I mean, you blink and you miss it. It's, it was so... But, um, I, be, don't, I don't think it's completely bad it was that short, though. Um, because it was a really random match, in my opinion. Yeah, kind of that, and... Um... It could have been a little dragged out if they went longer, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just a nice, quick little thing, good, uh... Big, you know, win for the Shield, so... Uh, what's that's this? the worst thing in the world, you know? Sometimes quick matches aren't really that bad. Billy Gunn apparently got a uh, concussion or something, I heard. He got uh-huh. injured. Oh, no, wait, it wasn't a, it wasn't a concussion. It was a, uh... He, like, he, he busted a blood vessel in his, in his lung or something like that? I heard something. Like yeah, he, he got he got injured, though. That's why they weren't on tonight, I, I heard. But, uh... Yeah, that was that's unfortunate for him though. Um, but apparently he sent he sent a, a you know a, a Twitter post and he's a lot better. He's all right. If I had to honestly rate this, um, I'd say about two and a half out of five. I'd give it a NA, which means it doesn't really 
the match was too short. It didn't really, wasn't really good or bad. Like, it doesn't affect the pay-per-view at all. It's an NA pretty much, so. I'm still going to give it a number rating. I'm going to I'm gonna say that it doesn't affect the pay-per-view too much in terms of overall score, but I'm still going to try and give it a review, which Zach is not going to probably do even if I asked him to. Um, I did give it a review. Huh? Give it an NA. I've seen people do that before. I'm just asking, if you had to give it a number, what would you give it? All right, so we got a two out of Zach. Okay, so we did get an NA. I stand by the NA. But Listen here. here, I'm the game. I'm Dark Paladin. This is my show. Okay, you do not interrupt me. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, Anyways, show. what? You're fired. Anyways, okay. I'm gonna leave now. No, don't leave. I need you as my. I need you as my. I need you as my secondary host. Damn it. Fine. You're my assistant. Don't leave. <laughs> no, because I work at the muffin factory. <laughs> oh man. All right, but the next match was the Andre the Giant Battle uh, Battle Royale, which was uh, really awesome. Actually, I actually liked the match. It was better uh, than I expected. It was. It, it was. It wasn't as long as I predicted, but it was really, really fucking close. It was uh, 13 minutes, and I'm always going to say it, damn it. <laughs> uh, it was 13 minutes and 58 seconds. Uh, I predicted 15 minutes or higher, uh, but it's that's practically 14 minutes. I'm not even going to count the two fucking seconds. Um, but yeah, it's practically 14 minutes, and so I was really close. But it was a really great match. It had a good a good couple spots in it that I liked. Um, one of them was the Kofi Kingston thing where he yeah, like yeah that was, that was when he like he didn't land his feet didn't land on the ground so he landed on the steel steps and then he pushed himself up and got back in the ring. That was awesome. That was fantastic. Uh, there was another part where uh, where um, let's see here. Trying to think of a couple. Oh yeah, it seems like Sheamus always gets himself eliminated when he's messing with Del Rio, because like he always eliminates himself with Del Rio. I I don't know if that's gonna start up another feud or anything, which I highly doubt it at this point, cause it, cause nothing happened on Raw tonight. But um, yeah, I I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, I don't really know. Was there anything that you specifically saw in the match besides the end? We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, besides the end that you uh. There was like one or two others. I can't really think about it right now. Yeah, there's there's a good one or two other extra. It was really good moments. Oh wait, uh, another one was when uh, I can't remember who he eliminated. Actually, they have a list right here, so I, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and check that actually, uh, if I can. Where is that list? I don't see the list. Oh no, did they just get rid of the list? Oh man. What? I'm trying to find the uh. The uh, the eliminations of the battle royale they actually had it listed, but they do not have it listed anymore for some strange reason. I checked like literally an hour ago, which uh, kind of sucks. I uh, kind of wish they uh, left that there, but whatever. Um, I forgot who he eliminated, but uh, Fandango eliminated somebody, and it was the funniest thing ever because. Fandango, like, and he didn't get eliminated at all, actually. He stayed in the match after this. But, like, for a good minute, he just kept dancing on the outside of the apron. And then eventually he got back in the ring, and I'm like, nobody took the chance to eliminate him when he was on the apron, okay? I mean, because if, if I was in the battle room and I see someone dancing, I want to do anything yeah, about it. Yeah, don't do anything about it. He's just like, he's on the apron. All you have to do is push him. What are you doing, damn it? Big show, why is that Twinkie dancing? <laughs> But uh, the the uh, the main point here though is that the winner of the match was Cesaro, which was the biggest surprise ever. I thought it was either going to be Ziggler or Big Show, and uh, the last person uh, besides Cesaro was Big Show though, so it was a really close one. Um, but uh, another thing that made it really awesome that Cesaro won is the fashion that he won, and he straight up picked up Big Show. Uh, and put him right over his shoulders, exactly Hulk Hogan style, actually, which is kind of ironic, because, you know, it is the Andre the Giant Memorial, uh, and he just picked up Big Show the way Hulk Hogan did, and just threw him right over the ropes, and it was just the most awesome display of strength, and it was also a really big shocker and surprise, um, probably one of the biggest surprises of the night, actually. Yeah, I like how they, uh, he eliminated Big Show, you know, and made him look strong and stuff for his big win, and 
it did come as a surprise. That was actually I think Zach the was, second surprise of the night. Yeah, um, I think Zach was extremely uh, one of the happiest people, I think. I think John was, maybe. Uh, maybe John was a bit more. But that was that was good. I don't think Big Show deserved it that much, but uh, that's just my opinion. But uh, it was a good, solid match. Um, I'd give it a three. Three and a half. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Uh, it was a, it was a really a really great uh, ma- match though. It was a lot better than I expected. So hopefully the next one next year is gonna be even you know the same or even better. Um, the next match is John Cena and Bray Wyatt, and uh, Bray Wyatt had Luke Harper and Eric Roman on uh, Eric Rowan on the sides with him. Uh, this match was actually, originally when I thought of this match, I thought this was so random and kind of out of place and just stupid for us. I think a lot of people thought that at first, but then when they did the... When they did the pro... Up. Yeah, when they did the build-up and the promos and everything, it, it like, really added on. It really did. When I first started, I was like, yeah. But then, like, when it started to build, I was like, okay, I'm kind of... Kind of ready for this match to see it and excited, you know, and um, it was a really good match. Yeah, it was a really good match, actually. Um... The reason... The wrong guy won. <laughs> the wrong guy won. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the the time of the match was 22 minutes and 47 seconds, um, which is pretty lengthy. Um, yeah. I, it didn't actually feel... Especially for a non-title. It didn't actually feel that long, actually, but... Um, yeah. These matches didn't really feel as long as they... I don't get it. As, as long as they went on for. Yeah, yeah um, but uh, the thing is with this match is a lot of people try to say that John Cena shouldn't have won, which I, I was a guy that wanted to see Bray Wyatt win the match. However, a lot of people made points, um, and that is the point of Bray Wyatt wasn't out there to win. He was out there to fuck up John Cena's mindset and kind of just screw around uh, screw around with John Cena, trying to change his character and uh, just, you know, mentally assault him. It wasn't any. It was not about winning. It was there. He was there to devastate John Cena physically and mentally, uh, and that's exactly what he did. John Cena did not fight the way he usually did. John Cena actually had a lot of offense throughout the match. You know, usually John Cena is a defensive kind of guy, and then at the end of the match is when he really picks up and just does his five moves of doom, and then his signature, and then his finisher, and then that's the end of it usually. This time, John Cena kind of kind of almost went UFC style on Bray Wyatt and literally hopped on him and just kept punching him in the face over and over and over again, you know, and then constantly attacking him and and very and like assaulting him so hard and everything and viciously. Uh, I th- I thought that's what really made it awesome. And plus, the, Bray Wyatt actually throughout the match had sort of these mini promos actually throughout the match where he would just talk to Cena and talk down to him and start laughing when he was getting hurt and. And uh, how how do you feel about this match? Yeah, it was a really good match. Um, Bray looked really strong here and stuff. And like I said in the preview or whatever, um, it didn't really hurt him losing. Really, it would have been like it would have put him in like another notch if he won, like a big victory. Yeah. Cena didn't really need it. He's won so many, and he's already established. Um, but they're like booted in Bray Wyatt, so um, we should have maybe got it. But um, yeah, it was a really great match. And like you said, uh, John Cena switched it up a little bit. And I like the part with the chair. Oh yeah, uh, at the end of the match, uh, Bray Wyatt grabbed a chair and it made it seem like Bray Wyatt was going to hit Cena with the chair, but Bray Wyatt actually, he took the chair and like just slid it to Cena and, and like got on the ground like he did in the first of the match, uh, and said, hit me, give me your best shot or whatever. And John Cena was like mentally trying to not physically, you know, hit him with the chair. And then, uh, and, and a lot of people were actually confused about this. I watched a couple of other reviews before uh, doing ours. And uh, John Cena grabbed the chair. He didn't hit Bray Wyatt. He actually hit... Uh, I thought he was going to hit him. Yeah, I thought he was going to hit Bray Wyatt. But uh, earlier in the match, uh, he hurt Luke Harper, and Luke Harper was out for a while. He, uh, he actually speared him through a barricade, actually, I think. Was that what happened? I think John Cena speared yeah. Luke Harper through a barricade, actually. <laughs> and, like, another point, like, like during the later of the match, when he was, when uh, John Cena and Bray Wyatt were doing something, he was just still, like... Still hanging over. Yeah, he's so still hanging over, kind of knocked was, out. My dad was telling him, well. Yeah, for those of you that still don't know the joke, we we like to say that Zach's dad is Luke Harper because they look so similar, but anyways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! Yeah, with the chair thing and, like, whatever, uh, you know, all the things Bray Wyatt was doing in the match, you know, just good storytelling and stuff, and not just a good match, but just total good story and stuff, you know? Yeah, but uh, instead of hitting Bray Wyatt, though, with the chair, he actually hit Eric Rowan, who was still, you know 
not knocked out cold from getting speared through a barricade. But, uh, you know, he was actually on the apron, and then John Cena hit Eric Rowan with the chair, dropped the chair. And this is the part where people were a little confused because John Cena used a weapon regardless on if it was outside force or not. He still used a weapon, and that's supposed to be a disqualification. Uh, I, I, don't, I think it's just if you're in the... If you hit it with the opponent you're facing. No, there was there were people saying that the rules are like he if he hit an outside person and you know with a weapon it's I don't know, he still used the weapon. Well John Cena's John Cena, so he can do whatever he wants. No, anyways, moving on. No, but um I also want to mention uh Bray Wyatt's entrance was really great. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, like Triple H's entrance. Oh uh, there were there were, there were th- a lot of good entrances. Yeah, there were three people that had really good entrances. One was Triple H Another one was Bray Wyatt, uh, and, uh... Randy Orton? No, not Randy Orton. Maybe maybe that was the only two, actually. And, um, what I found weird was, after the Bray Wyatt entrance, that big entrance... Oh, I no, thought... wait, you, you, are, you are correct, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but after that big Bray Wyatt entrance, you would assume, like, in the past, John Cena always does this, like, epic entrances, you would expect him to, like do something big but he just came out normal so that was kind of surprising yeah john c didn't didn't have a special entrance he uh kind of just no, came out no p diddy yeah he just kind of came out and you know did whatever um no p did it but uh, p diddy 20 minute concert but anyways uh to to kind of um you know give a final review rating on this i would definitely give this a four if not a four and a half it was a really good match. A lot of people actually consider this match to be actually the match of the night, which if you really pay close attention to the match, there were a lot of spots in this match that were just really great. And uh, what's your uh, review of it, Zach? I think I give it a 4-2. Um, it was really great, too. Um, a lot of good matches tonight. Um... Actually, uh, another spot that I would actually like to point out is uh, uh, Luke Harper and uh, Eric Rowan were on the outside of the the the, uh, the ring one, at one point. You know, as they were, they were the, um, you know, they were supporting Bray Wyatt. They're always outside of the ring. But uh, they stood together, and at one point, John Cena did a suicide dive all out of the ring. And uh, I don't know if it was exactly a suicide day- dive. Maybe it was off the top rope. I wasn't really paying attention when he jumped uh, of where he jumped off of. But he did a dive out the, uh, you know, out the ring and jumped on both of them. And I just thought that was the most awesome thing ever because his ass is so huge and he just jumped on two giant men. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it was it was a really great match. Uh, that is another one. Uh, the matches so far that I would really recommend watching. Um, again, I haven't seen the pre-show, so a lot of people say it's good though. So I would give that a shot. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H is a definite. Uh, Cesaro in the Andre, uh, or I mean the the Andre the Giant Battle Royale is definitely one that I would watch. Uh, John Cena and Bray Wyatt, you know, um, is another one I would definitely recommend watching. Uh, most of the pay-per-view, actually, besides the Shield match, um, actually is worth watching, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Um, this was actually, uh, we are going to give an overall rating later, but uh, just to quickly to, to quickly summarize it, uh, this re- this year's WrestleMania was really great, actually. Mm-hmm. It was a really great WrestleMania. Not many promos, but just the match quality. And stuff. Uh, minus... Minus the... The opening uh, segment was really good, too. We forgot to mention that. What opening segment? The one with Stone Cold, Hulk Hogan. And- oh, my God. I totally forgot to talk about that. Uh, we should talk about that right now, actually. Uh, we are just strictly... Talk- we usually do just strictly talk about the matches, and we tend to forget about the promos, but we cannot forget about this freaking promo. Uh, Hulk Hogan is the host of WrestleMania 30, those of you that don't know. And uh, he came out, gave, gave, a little, uh, gave a little promo speech, botched a sentence like he usually does he, he said S- silver dome instead of super dome i think at one point uh just like how back when he was announcing the wwe network he said the wwe universe is launching the wwe universe and that didn't make sense and uh although he did save it later which was kind of funny uh after that he, he realized that he fucked up and saved it afterwards but um yeah then after that uh I already kind of knew the third person that came out, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, Stone Cold surprised me because I did not see him uh, coming out. So Stone Cold came out, and he, he did like a thing, you know, you want to see me whip uh, Hulk Hogan's ass, you know, give me a hell yeah. And he did his classic stuff, and it was really awesome, and he gave another speech about WrestleMania. And then The Rock came out, and this was, I kind of knew that The Rock was coming out because I heard that he was contracted to make an appearance at WrestleMania 30, if not a match. Um, but I wasn't, I was surprised, but at the same time, I kind of wasn't because I kind of saw it coming. 
But uh, the, the Rock coming out and everything, he said a couple of funny things as The Rock usually does, and uh, they they all just you know it's an amazing segment. You gotta watch the very first of WrestleMania 30, if not he the is, entire thing. Good. Yeah, if not the entire thing, this is definitely a WrestleMania worth watching uh, throughout the the whole uh, throughout bleh, throughout watching the whole thing. I like last year's. There were a couple. In twenty seven. There were a couple good matches on. In twenty. Uh, and nine. You're just gonna start mentioning all of them, buddy. Sure, why not? Shut up. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so now we've got. Is that what you think? That it doesn't matter what you think. Shut up. I didn't even. You didn't even let me start saying the sentence. So all that right. was kind of a botch on your part, sir. With your uh, whole rock we said he reference. Botched as much as Hulk Hogan. He only botched one sentence. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So the match that I particularly hate, since I'm a number one fanboy of this guy and never wanted to see it happen, but uh, this is the match that everybody is talking about. Unlike the entire card and the main point of the uh, of WrestleMania, which was to see Daniel Bryan, uh, you know, surpass everything. Uh, this kind of overshadowed it a bit, and there are actually some people that think that it majorly overshadowed it, uh, which I will agree to some extent. Uh, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. I'm gonna quickly say the time and then get into it. Uh, this match was 25 minutes and 25 seconds, which is kind of funny. It felt shorter. Um, it felt a lot shorter. It felt like 15 minutes. It didn't even, it didn't even feel like 15 minutes. It felt like 12 minutes or something, but... Oh, holy crap! It didn't even. It really. It really did not feel like twenty five minutes. Um, how where do where can I begin with this? Okay, firstly, uh, just to get it out of the way, Undertaker lost. I I what to the surprise of everybody to the to the surprise of everyone, uh, Undertaker lost, and uh, I can't begin to you, you you say shit first. I I'm so I'm so pissed off. Yeah, he's a lot more pissed off than I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, going into this match, the build-up wasn't the greatest in the world, and everybody expecting, like, all the stuff that I watched before, like, the previews and stuff of other people, like, I don't think anybody said that Brock Lesnar was winning. I think it seemed pretty obvious for everybody that Undertaker would win. Like, nobody saw this coming. And, you know, um, uh, the match was all right. Not the greatest, really. Not better than like Triple H or Shawn Michaels or no, any of those. No, you are you are you are softening it up, in my opinion. Right, well, you can talk when you want to talk. Well, just let me finish real quick, then you could do your whole rant thing. I already did my yeah, rant, no. sir. You didn't want to wait. No, I'm but um, make a rant, but alright. No, but uh, yeah, just when that happened, though, that was really surprising. Like, you thought it was like a dream or something. That was like. That just came out of nowhere, and the people's face was uh, said at all, and it's just crazy. And people are chanting bullshit. Yeah, um, people chanted bullshit until the actual number on the uh, Titantron popped up that said 21 and 1. Uh, I, I don't even really know where to begin with this. Uh, I already kind of gave a, a mini rant, sort of, uh, of this earlier today which is doing surprisingly well at the moment uh i'll probably link this review in that uh as an annotation in that video so people can kind of watch this as well um but firstly i'm going to talk about this match in terms of build up this match has very shitty build up to be completely honest uh, it had about a month build-up, not even maybe, because Brock wasn't on the show sometimes, and it was just mainly Paul Heyman talking for him, uh, and, and when I say Paul Heyman talking for him, I mean Brock wasn't next to Paul Heyman, when it was literally just Paul Heyman coming out by himself, and it, it just, if you're gonna have the streak end, you should have a year of build-up, like Shawn Michaels and Undertaker and Triple H and Undertaker and even, uh... I mean, CM Punk and Undertaker didn't have a year of build-up, but it had about a good two, three months, and it was a very serious build-up, you know? Um, I'd say about two months, actually. I wouldn't say three, but uh, it was a very serious build-up, though. And uh, I... So the build-up was complete and utter shitty. Uh, it was just a very shitty uh, shitty build-up. Um, 
moving on. Uh, the match itself was utter crap. Uh, it was a very, it wasn't even a, a high standard ma- uh, match. It was a mid card almost map. Uh, map. Uh, I keep saying map match. Um, but uh, it it really wasn't. It doesn't. It nowhere near compares to Triple H and Undertaker and Shawn and Undertaker and uh, even Batista and Undertaker and Edge and Undertaker and Randy uh, Orton. and Randy Orton and Undertaker. You know they're not anywhere near as good as those matches. It wasn't as anywhere near as good as those matches, and it was just very disappointing. It was pretty much Undertaker getting beaten down the entire match, and Undertaker actually suffered an injury uh, because of whatever. I think he hit his head on the ground pretty hard, not during one of the F5s that he took. But, uh, you know, Undertaker, um, he fell on the mat when Brock was attacking his lower legs or something, and when he fell on the mat, he uh, he like bo- his head bumped up and he got a concussion or something, is what I'm hearing. Um, but, uh, not only was the match not great, it just, the, throughout the entire match, you kind of felt like something was up. Like, it, it didn't make sense. Undertaker was just not himself. He was getting beaten the living crap out of, and he had some very rare moments of comebacks, and I don't know what that was trying to address or anything, but uh, some people are saying like under it's to address that Undertaker was slowly getting weaker over the years, even though his match with CM Punk was amazing, um, and he, he he was still acting like his old self, like he was with Triple H. I I don't see that as the as the issue here of Undertaker losing his strength or power or whatever as as uh, WWE likes to say it. Um, but no, I just I can talk about this forever. So to simply cut it short. Uh, I thought that him losing the streak to Brock Lesnar is retarded, and Brock Lesnar does not deserve it whatsoever. He's a part-timer, and those of you that want to say that I'm a hypocrite because Undertaker is also a part-timer, excuse me, the man is 49 years old, and he gets injured every single fucking WrestleMania, so if he were to wrestle a lot more often, uh, like, say, for example, on Raw every single week, or at least Raw every two to three weeks or whatever, uh, and constantly still wrestle... He'd probably be injured for very mu- for a very long time and also not even get to wrestle at WrestleMania if he got injured for a long period of time. So that's why he only wrestles one or even two to three matches last year. He did about two or uh, he did about three matches last year. Um, that's why he only does a couple matches a year or or one a year because he's getting older. He cannot handle his body does not his body is not able to handle the amount of damage that gets done to it. Um, so it's not really being hypocritical because there's a legit and, uh, logical reason as to why Undertaker himself is also a part-timer. Also, not to mention that Brock is a person that does not give a shit about the business and only cares about fucking money. Whew! Okay, so any other things that you want to talk about that match, Zach? Um, just, like, one thing. I hate it in the part where, like, you know, Brock was number one and stuff, and I thought the streak could, should continue. Especially not, you know... Brock Lesnar winning it, you know, that was a bad call, um, but it's also good in a way of, it was shocking, you know, everybody, like, come to when it was so predictable and stuff, so, it was shocking, regardless of the ending, it was shocking, so that's something, if you know what I mean. I think a lot of people just, it, it's, I, I see where you're coming from. But it's not... It's like you don't see it coming, so that made it, like... I see where you're coming from, but it was the shock value that people didn't like. And to some, it ruined WrestleMania for them. There are people that watch WrestleMania just and only for The Undertaker. And not only that, people, like, cried and left the arena and didn't even care about the rest of WrestleMania after that match. There were people that literally got up, cried, and left. (laughs) Like, I can't really explain you know how that must have felt to like the people that were actually there seeing that live and uh i'm a big time undertaker fan i'm like he like i've ex- I explained in my rant video that I, like it, he's like my number one pick besides eddie guerrero um if eddie guerrero was still around uh eddie guerrero was still technically my number one but since he's unfortunately you know the late great eddie guerrero um i have to kind of put him tied with undertaker since undertaker is you know still around um yeah. but Huh? Oh, no, no, no. What were you going to say? No, I was about to say, it kind of killed the crowd, too. They didn't really get back into the WrestleMania to, like, the end of the WWE Championship match. 
Yeah, um... And then that way it really hurt it, too. The, 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 the stupid thing that happened afterwards is that the Divas match was right after this. Wow! This was... If you're gonna have the streak... Oh, do you at, want to rate them? Huh? I, I will. Just give me a minute. Oh, okay. I, I'm I still... You're going to the Divas no, no, no. Match. If you're gonna have... The, second, the thing is that, is that after that, the Divas match happened... And holy crap, that Divas match got so much. It didn't get a ton of heat, but it was just completely uninteresting. People were chanting Undertaker throughout the entire entire Divas match. And nobody was really into it. And the sad thing is, is that the Divas match was actually good, and we'll get into that in a second. But um, if I was going to honestly rate Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, I'd give it a 2 out of 5. Um, they give it like... Um... Like two and three fourths or something. I, I earlier uh, when I was in the car last night, I, I gave it a one out of five. I don't think it deserves that, but anywhere between the ranges of one point five out of five or two, uh, uh, or two um out of five is where I would rate it because it, it was just a it was a beat down. It was just simply a beat down. That's all it really was. I mean, Undertaker had a good couple spots here and there, but he didn't even do a dive out of the ring. And he didn't do his. He didn't really get any signatures off. I mean, he did a choke slam, and he did a hell two hell's gates. That tombstone wasn't that great. The tombstone that he did was really bad. You uh, can probably see it didn't really hit his head. Yeah, he not can, that they, they don't. He doesn't really like hit their head, but you know what I mean. He he has them lower down. Yeah, know? that was kind of a little high up. Yeah, the tombstone wasn't actually. It just, it just never really clicked that match. Yeah. It, it really, there's so much confusion behind, confusion behind that match and why Brock Lesnar was the one out of anybody to be picked. Uh, it's also very ironic because somebody pointed it out. Um, <laughs> Brock Lesnar lost to Triple H. Undertaker beat Triple H twice. Three times. Three times, actually, but that's more so the past. Um, uh, you know, the first match that WWE likes you, likes you to forget. Yeah, but anyways, uh, you know... <laughs> So, Brock Lesnar beat the guy that he couldn't beat at WrestleMania. Okay, that WWE logic, what? I would have much rather had Bray Wyatt, someone maybe even like Dolph Ziggler. I've explained in my in my rant video how Dolph Ziggler would work. Roman Reigns, uh, or even John Cena. And some of you are going to be like, oh, John Cena doesn't deserve it, blah, 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 blah. I'm not a John Cena fan. I usually hate on John Cena. But I made some damn good points earlier. If John Cena, or I mean, if Undertaker's old age was getting to him and it was the cause of why this match was bad, which I highly fucking doubt it because he did so well against CM Punk. Um, John Cena is really good at putting people over. He made Cesaro look great. He made Sandow look great. Uh, he made Ryback look great. I just, he's good at putting people over. And uh, John Cena, depending on who he's fighting, like say for example, CM Punk, Ryback, you know, whatever. He puts on a great match, so you cannot deny that. Uh, also, Cena's not a part-timer that cares about the company. Doesn't only do it for money. So, uh, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, anyways, uh, the whole thing is just a big, giant fucking debacle. And if you were going to have somebody beat the streak... It, it, would, it shouldn't have been Brock Lesnar. That's all I have to say. I'm not even truly mad at the streak breaking. It's for the fact of who won it, how it went down, and how shitty the fucking match was. Go, oh, son. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I, I really went off, off on that match, and I apologize. It's just I'm a big-time Undertaker fan, as I said, and I know a lot of people are also pissed off, so maybe some of you can understand why that had to last so long, uh, why, I, well, why I talked about it so long. Ooh, but anyways, uh, we are still going to talk about it every now and then throughout the rest of this because the, cr the crowd kind of ultimately based, uh, based the other matches, how they kind of, you know, went down. I'll just explain anyways. Um, so the next match was the, uh, Vicky Guerrero Divas Championship Invitational match. I don't know why it's called that. Essentially, it was a 14 Diva single fall match for the WWE Divas Championship, and it lasted 7 minutes and 4 seconds, which actually felt long. That was the one match I that I... Like 10 minutes. Yeah, that was the one match that I actually felt like was longer. Yeah. Um, because uh, it, it actually was a good Divas match. Like, it, it's sad because the crowd was so shocked after... You know, Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, which it was... If you're going to have... Again, if you're going to have the streak end, don't put a fucking Divas match. There shouldn't have been a rest period, is what I'm saying. Like, usually there's a rest period between a main event match and the actual main event. 
you shouldn't have done it if you're going to have the streak and you should have just went to the main event because eh. the, what do you mean eh? I don't know just cut it out completely what do you mean cut it out completely just don't show it what are you talking about that match the Davis match no no I'm saying like, have it before mean, like, res- restructure it yeah have, restructure it have it before the Undertaker match and then have on the, the main event after the Undertaker match because nothing was going to because if you're going to have the streak in, it should be, you know, a main event and have a great build-up. And it wasn't a main event and didn't have a great build-up. So, anyways. Uh, the Divas match, though, was... How was AJ going to compete with Undertaker's, you know, streak? Which is... Undertaker's streak is a better al- al- uh, accolade than um, than even having a title or whatever. So, anyways. Um, streak is better than the title? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people consider the streak to be better than, you know, when you've beaten the streak, it's better than, I'd say, even possibly having the title for a year. You're, you're now known as the guy who beat Undertaker at Mania. Uh, but anyways. 21 other people couldn't say that. Yeah. Um, which, like, huh? Some are repeats, so, you know, it's like 17 or 18. But, yeah, uh... So the Divas match didn't really compete too well after that. But the actual match itself was actually a really good match. There's a couple good spots in it. Um, I actually heard, uh, I don't know if Zach heard about this. Uh, apparently Cameron, in the middle of the match, uh, her bra got unhooked or something like that. So like in the middle of the match, she rolled out the ring and then was never to be seen from ever again after that. I hear that. Yeah. I hear about that. But, but like, she, like, walked out, like, holding her breasts together and stuff because she didn't want it to fall off or whatever. It was pretty it's funny. It's for business. <laughs> it's breast for business. But anyways, um, the match itself had a good, a good couple of spots in it. And uh, the people that really shined in this match were definitely AJ because I thought she was going to lose. Uh, AJ won, by the way. A lot of people thought she would lose. Yeah, um, AJ won the match. Uh, Natalia had a really good spot where she did a triple, uh, um... Suplex? Uh, not a suplex. Uh, she did a triple sharpshooter. There we go. Oh. Um, and, uh, Summer Rae kind of had a good couple spots in there. Not too many, though. Uh, the first of the, the first of the match was pretty funny when Tamina and AJ got kind of gang-banged a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, there were... <laughs> Uh, but there were a good couple spots. Like, the Bellas had a pretty good spot, even though I really didn't want to see either of them win. Uh, they had a good couple of spots. Um, Alicia Fox actually had a good couple of them, uh, and I actually like Alicia Fox. But um, it was overall a good match, um, to be completely honest. I would give it about a, a 3 out of 5, actually. Maybe a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, it was really good. Um, better than I expected. Um, what they did was... Um... You know, they didn't have too many girls in the ring. I think it was just, like, either one-on-one or just, like, four or something like that. You know, like, them doing their stuff. Like, they got, like, the Eva Marie and, like, whoever is not the greatest wrestler. They sort of got them out and sort of let the girls that can wrestle. Yeah. You know, like, the Natalia, AJ Lee. Oh, well, actually, no, I, I do. Sorry for the in- interrupting. I actually do sorry. want to point something out. Uh, Eva Marie actually did have a good spot in yeah. this match. They, like, let, you know, them that can't really wrestle that too bad or, like, They'll improve, but you know what I mean. Like, like they'll she, just have like a spot or two, and then they'll get out. Yeah, she actually, she actually did have a funny spot with uh, Tamina, which uh, that was pretty. It was pretty funny and awesome. As actually at the same time, uh, so if Eva Marie and Tamina have a feud or something, and Eva actually knows how to fucking wrestle, uh, I actually think that would be a kind of cool feud. Because uh, Eva isn't a small woman; she's actually kind of tall, and she kind of was almost the same height as Tamina when they were standing next to each other. So that was kind of cool to see. Um... But yeah, uh, I personally thought that the match was great. Uh, you continue on, Zach. You were you were talking about the match. Yeah, I was pretty much done with that. But uh, it's not a match. I give it like a three. Yeah. Better than I expected, actually. Yeah. It was just the crowd was dead. <laughs> they didn't care. Yeah, the they crowd would have cared anyway. But just that really killed it. That Undertaker thing. The it, the Undertaker thing really killed the match. The crowd was dead throughout the entire thing. The only part where the crowd kind of got back into the deep, kind of went into the Divas match a little bit is when AJ actually won, because that was actually was sort of, it was a surprise too. It was kind of shocking as well. Obviously not as shocking as The Undertaker losing, but uh, it, it was kind of a shocking as well. And, um, you know, people kind of cheered AJ a little bit after it was over. Then moving on to the main event, which lasted 23 minutes and 45 seconds, uh, I actually thought the main event, uh, was kind of short, but at the same time, I also thought it was longer, so it's kind of weird, but, um, 
I felt like it was going to be longer than the Triple H thing, which it actually wasn't. Uh, but you know, uh, the the main match for the first five to ten minutes was also silent. Nobody really did anything until nobody really was uh, cheering or did anything until Triple H came out, uh, and then that's when like you know the crowd started going a little crazy because Triple H came back out during the triple threat of Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and Batista, um, you know, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Randy's entrance was cool, by the way. Yeah, uh, the three people, the three people that re- the three people that really had a good entrance uh, were definitely Triple H, uh, Bray Wyatt, and um, Randy Orton. Uh, Bray Wyatt's was really good because it, it just the whole shaman thing the voodoo thing that happened in the beginning was kind of cool and uh triple h's whole shao Kahn thing was really cool uh and then randy orton's uh you know rev theory came out and then you know sang the song and it was it was really awesome it was actually spot on actually they sounded really great live. Yeah, they sounded really great live like it almost sounded like it, it, they weren't lip singing yeah, yeah <laughs> they they weren't lip singing but it sounded like the studio you know the, the actual final product which was awesome um I actually didn't think that either. I actually didn't. I, I expected, you know, awesome entrances, but I didn't expect Bray Wyatt or Randy Orton. You know, I, I knew Triple H was probably going to have one, but, you know, you know, the I other two. Bray Wyatt. I, I know about the band thing, but uh, I didn't expect the Randy Orton thing. You knew about the Bray Wyatt one? Yeah, they announced it on Twitter, like, February or something. Oh, okay. But, you know, once I actually saw it, you know, it was just, like, it's still that's awesome, cool. yeah. Um... The, the way this this match actually uh, ended was kind of cool. Uh, the uh, it, it, it was uh, done by submission, which I thought was awesome. It actually wasn't done in by the running knee, which uh, is kind of cool and stuff. But like I said, the crowd was kind of dead until Triple H came out. When Triple H came out, the crowd kind of got back into it. And then uh, throughout the rest of it, the crowd was really into the match again. Uh, what really set the crowd up, though, in like when they went crazy, is when Triple H brought out the sledgehammer, and Dan Bryan hit him with the sledgehammer, and you know he took it away from Triple H and hit him with the sledgehammer, and then the crowd went kind of crazy after that. And then when Triple, uh, or I mean uh, Randy Orton and Batista kind of ganged up on Dan O'Brien, they did this amazing, um, amazing. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's uh, spot. Not spot. Uh, it starts with a B. This spot. No. Bump. Bump. There we go. They did the spot too. It's a spot, but it also the 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 main term for what happened is called a bump. But anyways, uh, the spot slash the bump. Took a bump. Yes, the spot slash bump that happened was uh you know Daniel Bryan originally was gonna get Batista bombed through the table uh the announcer table, but what actually happened was that, uh, you know, Randy Orton set the uh, steel steps next to the uh, other table, and what happened was that Batista set him up for the Batista bomb, threw him off his shoulders, and Randy came out of nowhere with an RKO and put him through the table. Now, the funny thing about this, though, which was also really painful to see, is that one of the monitors that were on the announce table didn't get thrown away, and Randy's back actually landed on that monitor, and he was just cringing and shit. Yeah, it looked, like it, hurt. it looked like it really hurt. See that? You wonder why they throw when they do that table spots? They throw the TV thing. Yeah, you wonder why they take off the TV monitors. Well, not monitors. like Brock Lesnar and hit somebody, but you know when they, <laughs> when they just throw. I guess that's why, so they don't hit it when someone goes down. That, that was a really cool spot. That was really unique. That was really unique. Um, it was awesome to see. That happened, and you know, the, it really kind of actually gave another shock value because the, the you know the medic team was coming out, and I they, were uh, for Randy Orton. they started. You think they tried to chanting for Randy Orton? No, no, I thought um, the oh yeah, some people thought the that stretcher. they were yeah, some people thought that they were coming for Randy Orton because his back, you know, or, you know, whatever was messed up. But no, uh, the stretcher came out, and you know, they were coming for Daniel Bryan because he was kind of Randy Orton was still moving a little bit. Daniel Bryan was kind of lifeless. Somebody made a really good point, though. After it happened, Batista kind of stared at the both of them and was like, uh, what should I do? Because these people look... You know, they both look like they're in pain. Randy Orton... Uh, Randy is not getting back up. What should I do? And then, you know, I guess he waited for the stretcher to come out to pick up Randy Orton and uh, throw him back in the ring or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, then the stretcher came over Bryan and everybody was like, oh, man, Bryan's going to get taken out or whatever. But then, you know, Brian pulled a, a McFoley, you know, a Mankind, and uh, got off the stretcher and went back into the match, and it was awesome after that. It was a ton of uh, just constant, like, finisher reversals and finishers being done, 
and uh, signatures being done and all this other crazy stuff that kept happening. And Daniel kept getting thrown out the ring at the last little minutes of the uh, portions of the match. So you were kind of like, oh, man, he got thrown out the ring. No, or, you know, it's a really exciting match, actually. Yeah, that was good. I want to say with the stretcher thing, you know, that was, you know, that was um, cool and all. But um, I think what I ideally what I'd like to see is maybe he would go in the back. And maybe for a minute or two, it would be like, oh, is he coming back or something? Maybe like go fully into the back instead of just on the ramp if you know what yeah. I mean and then him coming back or something like sort of like clenching like I don't know I think that would have been a little bit cooler but you know it was a great match probably second best match of the night maybe first just because of the moment no I I definitely give the match of the night to uh, Daniel Bryan and Triple H yeah um what would you rate it what I would rate it um I'd say a, a, a solid four out of five I would not give it a four and a half out of five Simply for the fact that uh, it the, the main portion of the match that made you excited the most was the middle with Triple H. Then it kind of died down a little bit. And then it was the spot with uh, Daniel Bryan taking the bump of the uh, Batista bomb into the RKO. And then the end of the match. Uh, the very beginning of the match was really dead and it was mainly because of the crowd. Um, and then, you know, the, some portions of the match kind of slowed down. And so, I, I don't know. The Triple H and Daniel Bryan match, just, it was... Heavy impact, constant, the yeah. Way through, yeah. It was hot the entire way through. Um, so I, I would give it about a four out of five. I would not give it a four and a half out of five. Yeah, I, I would give it a four too. Um, especially if Batista and Randy Orton. I mean, you know, they could put on good matches, but you know what I mean. It's not like, you know, Shawn Michaels like really great wrestlers. Like the best wrestler in there was Daniel Bryan. So it's like, yeah. I don't know if he had maybe like a little bit better, it could have been like bumped it up even more. But uh, surprising, it was just for that moment. At the end. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, Batista didn't do half bad in this match. He's kind of been sucking lately. But I, I I noticed over the weeks, he seems to kind of be getting back into it. Maybe WWE's telling him to do some freaking cardio work or something to get some stamina. But uh, he's not so much on the mat so much. He's not, uh, you know, constantly on the ground taking breathing breaks and stuff. He's actually fighting back a lot and, you know, staying into the match pretty well. So he, he did an okay job throughout this match. That's what mainly, mainly what I was worried about was Batista's performance. Uh, I know Randy can go because obviously he's been doing this still. But having one wrestler out of the two really slow and sluggish would have really kind of killed it. Yep. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I think we already say. kind of. The confetti at the end was fucking awesome, by the way. Um, and somebody pointed it out. Uh, WrestleMania 10 was Bret Hart and 20 was Chris Benoit. Uh, it, it was pretty awesome to see. All, all technicians. You know, they're, they're, they're all technical wrestlers. Uh, and I thought that that was, uh, you know, pretty awesome to see and actually think about for a moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, it was kind of funny, uh, you know, Brett's friends came out and congratulated him. Chris Benoit's family came out and congratulated him. You know, Brian, yeah, Brian's family came out and congratulated him. See, if CM Punk was in here, I think they would have CM Punk Punk come come out out and, you know, also hug him. That would have been awesome, but too bad that didn't happen. Yeah. It would have been a surprise. That would have been kind of interesting. Yeah. It, was, it still didn't take away from the moment at all. It was just such a great thing. You know, he deserves it so much. And the payoff was great. And yeah. The months of chasing it, the chase finally paid off. So, um, overall, what would you rate this WrestleMania out of 100? Out of 100? Yes, out of 100. Wait, 100? I don't know. Just, I feel like being different. Okay. <laughs> I'll give it an 85. An 85? Because I was going to give it like an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah. If we're going to go by 10s, we're going by 100, so yeah. 85 would be, you know. Um, I don't, I don't really know. I, I would like to give it an 85 as well, um, but I'm kind of tempted to just kind of give it a, a, a 75 out of 100. Uh, simply, be, oh, not a 75, I'm sorry, um, an 80 out of 100, because uh, I, I'm really torn with the whole Undertaker thing, and uh, there were some slower moments throughout WrestleMania from time to time. So, uh, it, it kind of, that kind of really killed it. Uh, some people, hey, 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 at least I'm giving it an 80 because, uh, some people are saying that it was the worst WrestleMania ever because of that. Or some people are saying they gave it a zero out of 10. Some people are saying, you know, that it was a, a five out of 10 or stuff like that. I, I wouldn't do that per se just because of that one moment, but I am heavily torn by it. And I do think that it, the, 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 
the actual event itself kind of suffers because of that. Because it honestly did. The, cr- the crowd didn't know what the fuck to do. So, uh, yeah, it was it was insane. Um, some people lost, like, thousands of dollars, by the way, on bets to Brock Lesnar, which kind of sucks to the people that lost all their money. But anyways. Yeah, so that was just... Betting's bad, kid. kids. Yeah, d- don't, don't bet. Don't ever bet, regardless, on wrestling matches, ever. But anyways, uh, yeah, so, um... That's WrestleMania 30, uh, and uh, it was actually a pretty good WrestleMania. It's a lot better than 29, as Zach said. Uh, I don't think 29 is terrible. I just think a lot of the matches were kind of stale, and the best two that are honestly on that card are CM Punk and Undertaker and um, and Triple H and Brock Lesnar. Uh, and then, you know, 28 was actually fairly decent. 28 was good. Yeah, 28 was good. Um, 27 was shit. Uh you know, we're not going to do all of them, but the really noticeable WrestleManias that are terrible are were, were 20. 20 wasn't that great. 20 had three, about three good matches on it, and then the rest was shit. Uh, and then I, I, pers- people are saying that the three matches on 20 make up for the rest of it. No, the fuck they don't. I'm sorry. That, that entire WrestleMania was pretty damn bad. And uh, the, the two or three great matches on there do not make up for that entire card. Um... WrestleMania 9 was really shitty. It's known as probably the worst WrestleMania. Um, if you do not think that WrestleMania 9 is the worst WrestleMania, post in the comments what WrestleMania you think is the worst because by far I don't understand or think anything can beat 9. But anyways, uh, 9 was just so bad. Uh, but yeah, uh, WrestleMania 30 was great. It's a good. It's definitely a, uh, a WrestleMania to uh, watch. Um, and it's probably been one of the bre- be- uh, I was about to say breast, what the fuck? I've <laughs> probably been one of the best WrestleManias in the last, I'd say, maybe even five years, possibly. It was a really good WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll stick without that, but, um, could very well be. Maybe, if, maybe not five, but, uh, ranging from five to three years, definitely probably the best out of those. I like 26 a lot. Huh? So I like 26 a lot. 26 was well, you really said five good. years, you know, that was in 2010, so five years, 2009, but, uh, if you were to take 26 out, I think I would say yeah, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but that was the, uh, WrestleMania 30 review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and possibly agreed. If you disagreed, post, uh, what you disagreed with, and, uh, yeah, uh, we will see you guys later. Zach, you gonna give your usual goodbyes? See ya. Enjoy your day. Bye. Wow. <laughs> all right and uh yeah yes. uh, <laughs> all right and uh so this was uh, a dark pal- paladin video this was a, 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 a um uh, this was a dark paladin video and uh i'm gonna stop talking like stewie now and i'm gonna say uh <laughs> be sure to like comment anyways be sure to like comment and subscribe for more and remember stay sexy peace